Grace and peace to you all in the name of Jesus Christ. My name is Mi Rang Baek. I'm pastor here at Ginto Park United Methodist Church. We welcome all of you joined us on YouTube and Facebook for worship today. We invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, follow us on Instagram, and like our Facebook page. And also, you may want to give your tithes and offerings through our website, kintoparkumc.org. We also want, to, uh, want you to share your joys and concerns, comment down below, so we can celebrate and pray with you. We continue um, our sermon series about worship. Today, we are going to talk about worship standing on holy ground. Friends in Christ, let us center ourselves and prepare ourselves for worship on 18th Sunday after Pentecost.
please join me for a call to worship. God calls us from a burning bush. We are standing on holy ground. The Spirit calls us to proclaim God's name to all generations. We are standing on holy ground. Jesus calls us from the cross, come and follow me. We are standing on holy ground. Amen. Again, I invite you to share your joys and concerns. Comment down below. Join me for a pastoral prayer, followed by Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Everlasting God, you are the ground of hope and unshaken foundation of our, of our lives whenever we are in the storm. We come to you this morning and praise your holy name. Fill us with, you, with your spirit and lead us into holy ground with your love. May God be with those who are ill and those who are in loss and grief. May God be with those who are in suffering. Use our hearts and hands to shine the light of hope. Use our prayers to clean up hurts and stains in their, heart, in their hearts. God of reconciliation, Please remember this world in conflicts and divisions. Lead us, Christians and churches, to be channels for making reconciliation and unity. We thank you, Lord, for this church 
as the body of Christ. We remember that this church was and is and will be an influential church to people in this world and area. Bless each one of us in this faith community and take all our hearts and hands to show your love to all other people. God of incredible surprises, as we gaze into the clouds, remind us that we are standing on holy ground. Place our feet on the pathways of peace and hope. Draw our attention from the vision of the Lord, rising to the heavens to be with you and help us to focus on the ministries that you would have, have, us, to, have us do. Keep us ready and willing always to serve you all our days. Fill us with the Spirit of Jesus when we pray as he taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. to the 
Testament scripture is from Exodus chapter 3 verse 1 through 15. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro his father-in-law the priest of Midian and he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire it did not burn up. So Moses thought I will go over and see this strange sight why this bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hands of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Peretzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you, and this will be a sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of our fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name you shall call me from generation to generation. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Mark 9, 38 to 41. Teacher, said John, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we told him to stop because he was not one of us. Do not stop him, Jesus said, for no one who does a miracle in my name can in the next moment say anything bad about me. For whoever is not against us is for us. Truly, I tell you, anyone who gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to the Messiah will certainly not lose their reward. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends in Christ, one of the accepted truths of our faith is that God is everywhere. But here and there, now and then, the Bible tells us about a particular inbreaking of the divine presence into someone's life in a most extraordinary manner. One of the best known and most important of these stories is the encounter we just heard about between God and Moses on Mount Horeb. You're probably, probably familiar with the story of Moses and the burning bush. The story of the burning bush always makes my heart beat whenever I read it. And it raises various thoughts. What is the burning bush? It means the appearance of God to Moses. In the text, the bush 
is blazing, yet it is not consumed. It is a metaphor revealing who God is. The burning bush implicitly shows God as the never destructive fire. Rather, God is like the great brightness shining Moses and all Israelites in darkness and guiding them into a new life. In the text of Exodus, God prevents Moses from looking closer and closer to the burning bush. Moses seems to be diligent to his sight rather than God's sight. Moses is setting his mind not on God's things, but on human things. He is driven by his instant curiosity. What, what is it? However, God wants Moses to know where he is now. He is standing on holy ground. What makes that particular ground holy? Is it the presence of a strange burning bush? It is holy ground because God is present there. God is holy, and where God is present, it is holy ground. The, world, uh, the word holy really just mean, means different. Different other than or set apart for a special purpose. What makes the ground on which Moses stands different? It seems that what makes the ground holy, different, or set apart is that Moses experiences God in that place. Did you know that the Latin word sanctus, meaning holy, is where we get our word sanctuary? A sanctuary means a container for holy things. This room right here is called a sanctuary because it has been set apart as a place where we may know the presence of God. There is nothing um, intrinsically, intrinsically holy about this room at all or Mount Horeb for that manner, for that matter. They only become holy they only become holy ground because God becomes present here or there in Mount Horeb. Holy ground is the kind of place where we hear a voice from a burning bush, cons unconsumed by, flaming, by, by flame calling us to devote our lives to ending oppression. It's the kind of place where we offer to Christ what we think is nothing and thousands are fed through grace. On Mount Horeb, Moses finds himself suddenly on holy ground, that sacred space where heaven and earth meet. God asks him to take off his sandals. This is God's invitation for Moses into a new life. Moses should be ready for being on God's side. Moses is in the time of choice. If he does not take off his sandals, it means retrieval from God's vision to his own human things. However, if he takes off his sandals, he will stay on holy ground with God and God will begin new things with him. Moses is standing before the burning bush, he must choose which way to go, take off shoes or not. On which way do you want to be? Which way shall you go? Will you take off your sandals and cross the threshold? What do you have to take off from your minds? What does God want you to take off from your life? What does this congregation have to take off? What must this church take off and take up for Jesus and God's people? Loving friends in Christ, take off 
human thoughts, human things in your mind when you come to encounter with God and worship God. Fill your minds with God's desire, God's heart, and God's purpose. God is inviting you to stand on holy ground. God is inviting you to encounter God through this time of worship at Ginto Park. Do you think you could not do anything because, you, your age, because of your age? Do you have a feeling of fear of the present which looks like unsafe? Are you afraid of the future because it is unknown? If so, take off your shoes. You are safe and free. God is and will be with you. Are you still controlled and taken by bad, unforget unforgettable memories in your past time? Is your present life still negatively influenced by them? If so, take off yours. You are free. Even though every day is new in Christ, do you still stay in yesterday? Or do you waste today without any expectation of tomorrow? If so, take off yours. You are free. You can live today faithfully and can welcome tomorrow joyfully. Do you see your neighbors from your thoughts based on your gender, sexual orientation, culture, skin color, faith type, rather than God's never failing love open to all people? If so, take off yours. You are free. Jesus wants you to be not a stone that condemns, condemns people, but the rock, rock of the church as the body of Christ, embracing all people. Are you in suffering by unexpected and unpredicted things? Are you anxious? Are you worried? And are you exhausted? If so, take off yours. You are free. God is your rock and your refuge. God constantly invites you to realize that you are standing on holy ground and look at the cross of Jesus, always because there is the genuine brightness shining and guiding your life. Similar stories with the image of brightness show us the image of God. Stories of Mount Sinai and the pillar of cl cloud and fire leading Israelites in the wilderness. We Christians have a metaphor of God. It is the cross of Jesus Christ. For those who crucify Jesus, the cross is a, is a tool of death penalty and total ending of Jesus' life. For those who do not believe in the promise of the resurrection of Jesus, the cross means darkness, despair, failure, and hopelessness itself. For God, and for those who believe in the power of the love of God, however, the cross is not the end, but new beginnings. It is the victory of God's love and justice over the power of death, fear, hate, and injustice. All conspiracies, projects, and thoughts that human have are failed in the cross of Jesus. But God's things are successful in the cross of Jesus. Therefore, the cross of Jesus is God's grace, God's love, and God's glory. It is the genuine brightness saving us, shining our steps, and guiding our ways to the kingdom of God and heaven. When in your own life have you found yourself on holy ground? Where were you and what prompt, prompted this realization? What was God calling you to do? And how did you answer that call? Friends in Christ, worship is the time to encounter with God. When you come to worship, 
you come into holy ground and holy time, you step into holy ground. Holy ground is any place where we encounter with God and experience God, where we learn that we are not alone and where we discover that God provides us with what we need to be, who we are being called to be, and what we are being called to do. It is the place where God challenges us to take off our shoes. God invites us to stand on holy ground with barefoot. Barefoot helps us, to con helps us connect to the ground, makes us more mindful, aware, and intentional. In this holy time of worship, God invites you to take off, to take off your sandals, your desire, your thoughts, your preferences, and your fear. God invites you to leave your comfort zone and enter holy ground, the growth zone, with God. Holy ground is a place of new beginnings. You and I are now standing on holy ground because God is with us here and now, here at Kinder Park United Methodist Church. We are standing on holy ground and we do not stand alone. Our God is a mighty God who was and is and will be forever. Loving friends in Christ, take off. Take off your shoes. You are indeed on holy ground. Thanks be to God. Amen. Loving friends in Christ, may the love of God the Creator, God the Redeemer, God the Sustainer rest upon you and live through you this day and always. Go in peace and live a life of worship. Amen. Thank you.